so welcome everyone to another episode of Monday Night Raw. This is continuing on from last week where our topic was, is no sex before marriage realistic? Uh, what conclusion did we come to, Sister Buna? The conclusion was yes. Yes. It's very realistic. Just to make sure for everyone listening. So uh, we're continuing on from last week. Um, sorry, when you come on, could you please mute yourself? Uh, we're continuing on from last week because there were some questions that uh, we couldn't answer because basically we're not in a position to answer them. So we we wanted to get some married people on to um, give not just not their opinion, give godly counsel um, based on scripture. And our theme this year, if you don't know, as Young Adult Ministries is holiness in all manner of living. And if we are to be holy, if we are to be like Christ and not like the world, then we don't get married like the world. So we want to know, how do we get married? Um, what is the godly way for us to pursue marriage and everything that comes with it? So the topic is, how do I get married? With that being said, I'm now going to hand over to Sister Bula. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Michael. <laughs> okay, praise the Lord, everyone. Greetings to you. Thank you so much for being online, for joining us tonight. Um, yeah, as Brother Michael said, so much came out of last week's topic. Uh, for those of you that weren't there, is no sex before marriage realistic? The scripture, the word tells us that absolutely is. And through the power of the Holy Ghost, through a love for the Lord, and through um, practices of holiness and desire to be holy, it is possible. Um, and yeah, completely second what Brother Michael was saying there, we don't, think, we don't do things like the world. However, what I would say is that what came out of last week is that there is still some kind of shroud of mystery, apparently, on how we as saved people, or what, yeah, what, the, what the standard is, or what the procedures are, or how we at court, or a date, or get, get married. Um, yeah, just to clarify, I am also not, I am also not married, but well, I am not qualified to answer that question at all. Um, what I would say in general, just before we delve into this is obviously there was a lot that was unclear last week in terms of procedure and etc. but I do encourage you guys to seek and speak to your leader, pastor, spiritual mentor, whoever it is about these kinds of things. Um, as the recommendations and standards of every place is different and everyone is different. So it's really good to get that one-on-one -on -one counsel from people that you trust who are spiritual and will lead you into godliness and holiness. Um, yes, and also in general, of course, we don't just date or court or hook up for dating's sake. We are very intentional about our relationships and seek, just as we do in every area of our lives, we seek God, we seek God's direction, um, and we need his help. But in terms of practical things, it's good to talk. It's good, there's safety in a multitude of, of, um, of counselors. So I'm so glad I'm seeing already that the, I've got, we've got some people here who can <laughs> give us some great advice. So today we, we want to hear from those who have already kind of been down this road. We don't wanna talk so much about marriage today, um, that will be another topic, or we might get into that later. But the big question is, how do we marry? Um, I think that's maybe too general to start off with. So what I'll start off with is a question that came out from last week. What is the difference between courting and dating, if there is one? Um, can any of our married friends already give us some information about that. Don't go quiet. I can see, I can see the, I can see the dailies. I can see, I think this Elder Joseph is on the line. I can see quite a few. Let me scroll to that. So I will call people out. I'm not ashamed. <laughs> I'm not ashamed. You can't hide. So anyone who's got some advice on that question, please feel free to share. Evening everyone. Um, I'm Farai, for all those who don't know. Um, I've been married for three years now. Um, oh yeah, it's been a journey. Um, but I feel like there's no difference between courting and dating. It's just the wording. 
you know, and I think that we just use the term courting to make ourselves feel better, you know, um, and not so much, or, you know, because we know that if you go into church, say, oh, I'm dating this person, it's frowned upon. But if you say, oh, pastor, I'm courting this person, I'm interested in this person, that's more accepted, you know, um, because people date to have the intention of marrying just like they have um, the intention to marry when they're courting. So my opinion is that it's the same thing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else have anything to add to that? I've heard, I've heard, let's say, different, a different opinion on, on that. So, yeah, anyone have anything to, to share? Wouldn't it depend, right, on the intentions? Because one person might be intending to lead this into marriage and another person might be intending to do something quite nefarious. So isn't it the intention that justifies the wording? Because one person might be dating and another person might be courting. Right, I, I also feel the same way. I feel like dating is very open-ended. Um, could have looked at the definitions actually, but courting traditionally is we are um, we are entering into this uh, this relationship to see if we are compatible for marriage. Are we good? We're we are we're getting together because it's our intention to to be married. So dating, whereas dating just feels like let's see where this goes, or let's let's kind of yeah. I don't know. It just doesn't. It, the, the intention, like you say, Michael, is to, I, I feel it's missing from dating. Can I also say something? Of course, yeah. Yeah, I think also. I think there's there there is obviously a, a it's a bit debatable whether dating and courting are the same thing. But I think in my mind, for some reason, dating has always connoted some sort of immorality. So like. I was listening into um, a talk yesterday, so it was about Christian dating, so those Christians discussing about dating topics, and then they said something like, there is no hard and fast rule, um, some people might feel okay, you know, kissing or holding hands, and I'm thinking, okay, but, so I feel like with dating, it, I don't know, it seems to connote um, room for, you know, doing things, you know, if, if you know what I mean, so, whereas for me, whereas courtship, especially the way I know it, there is, um, like, purity is at the very centre of it. So, yeah. Greetings. That's Greetings, the... everyone, from Excellent. Michael and Sister McKenzie. Thank you so much, Mary. Can you hear that. me? Um, yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Sister. Sorry. That's okay. Um, yeah, so, in my personal opinion, I was always under the impression that if someone is caught in their it's in their mind that they're to be married. Um, whereas dating, you just want to get to know the person, not with the intention to marry. And actually I've just Googled it and I agree with what Google says. It says courtship is when a man is attempting to woo a woman to win her over with the end result being marriage. Dating by definition is a social event whereby two people meet for companionship. Right. So, yeah, even with the um, definition here from the Oxford Dictionary, the courtship is with the intention of marrying. Thank you for bringing that out, Sister Janice. Absolutely. And, yeah, echoing um, Mary's sentiment as well. So was it Brother... Who was it? Brother Far... Was it Fari? Far Sorry if I got your name wrong. I think it was Taf Tafari, was it? Tafari. Was it Tafari? Tafari. Tafari. Oh, Tafari. Hi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> greetings, greetings, greetings. Good to have you. Tell us, tell us. Um, okay, so you've heard, you've heard a different side or the, the definitions of the words. Do you still have the same feeling, opinion? What do you, what do you yeah, say? Yeah, definitely. I, I feel like it's just... I think it, I feel like it's semantics and it's just wording. I feel like people can date one another and still have the intention to get married. Um, 
and people can court and still have the intention to get married. Um, and, you know, you, talk, you spoke about an understanding between the two. One might not feel like um, that, that it's going to lead to marriage and the other feel like it is going to. Well, that's just a miscommunication. That doesn't mean that the wording, um, you know, played a part in, in, in that. It could have, but again, um, that could just be a miscommunication between the two. Whereas if two people are going into something, then surely they're communicating what their intentions are from the beginning, or surely they should be doing that. But again, I feel like my opinion is that I just feel like it's semantics, you know, um, and wording, you know, can can play, can be, um, you know, a trivial thing to some things. But again, it's down to intention. Right. Yeah, I, I hear that. Thank you. Thank you. What I would say is I can only stick to the definition i suppose what the, what the definition is at this moment so someone has put in the chat that definitions can change over time but what this means at this moment i would say that as children of god we aim for courtship with the the the, the very notion of coming together is always with the intention of should we get married whereas dating is just assessing apparently the, oh, sorry, not apparently, according to the definition, it's just assessing romantic or sexual compatibility. Someone. Yeah, Sam, Sam, Sam. Hi, Sam. Hi, Sam. Blessing. Yeah, I, I, for me, I have to agree with the, the Tafari um, because I, I think the word courting is just, for me, is just to pretty up the word. Um, I think dating is more used in the word in the world side, and courting is more used in church side. You know, there's not you're not going to hear someone out there be like, "Oh, I'm courting," but you know, church people we try to make it look because we're trying to be separate to the word, so we sorry to the world. So we're like, okay, we're not dating, but we're courting. Do you know what I mean? I, I think when you're dating somebody, especially if you're coming from not even from a church background, I think just necessary when you're dating somebody is because you genuinely like them. If you're not, then, you know, well, we call it nowadays a link. So you're just going to see, going to do something or going to talk oh, to somebody. Linking. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You're not necessarily classy as, as dating. When you're dating somebody, you're with that person intentionally. You're doing something with that person. You're actually going out, you know. But when you're linking somebody, it might just be a one-day thing. So for me, courting, exact same thing as dating. So I have to agree with Tafara. Also, Sister B, can I just add... I think as well it's because there's a separation because dating has this stigma around it about like being with more than one person so if you're dating you go with this guy one week he's all right and then you might go with the other guy one week and he's okay but with courtship it's with one person who you intend to marry so I think the word dating has has that stigma around it I think that's why we want to can I separate it because no we're not gonna go from one person to one person we're with one person um with the intention to marry that person that's, how I that's, thought. that's great that's a, that's a great point um thanks so much Crystal what I would say is because of that that's exactly why um because of that or that stigma which comes from the what looks like the definition of the word itself or the term itself that's why we're using a different term to try and I know you guys say it's like trying to pretty it up or like trying to... I just call it holiness because we ain't yeah. the world. So why would we fight to be like the world? It's kind of like, why, do, why would we fight to bring certain things into the church that don't belong to the church? The, church? the kingdom and the church has its own culture and its own identity. And I think it might sound like semantics, but then these semantics change into the world, the church becoming the world, which it has become. Like I always talk about ballet. Anyway, let me not get into that. I ain't trying to mess up with no one's what they do. But we brought a lot of rubbish in the church under the guise of we're trying to just, you know. Nah, we don't. I don't want to be like the world. I don't want to sound like the world. And my aim is to be like Christ and have his divine nature. So I don't want to have anything to do with the world. So we shouldn't want to have anything to do with the way the world defines things. So that's my, my, my thing. But Joseph had his hand up. Okay, so... Okay, just a, a quick caveat, all right? Um, I may, I'm in another meeting right now, and I really, I'm just sacrificing to be on this call. So if I have to just shut up quickly, that's because I've got to turn my attention somewhere else. 
So we're, we're asking a question about words that aren't in the Bible, right? And so I'm going to be extremely old school on this. And I'm going to stay old school because this is exactly how I'm raising my daughter. And it's exactly how I intend to, to run my business. Um, I've been married it's going to be 17 years this year. And we can talk about how I met my wife. Um, but when you're looking at dating and courtship, you're looking at two words that aren't biblical. So then we have to ask ourselves, what do we have to do with these words? And if we are trying to live our life after the word of God, what would be the optimum and optimal scenario for us to be meeting and dating other people? And so I want to lay just a quick foundation to say that one of the problems that we're having, especially as people of mostly um, Caribbean culture, we actually don't have anything passed down to get a woman or a man. There's nothing passed down to us. I got married at 22 and in my community, it was a shock, not in the church, but in my community, a guy getting married at 22. If I had a child at 16 or 18, nobody would have been surprised. That's how the base, the culture that we've inherited is. Okay. So we are creating all of these words and we're looking at, well, how do we get married in the church? A lot of the stuff that we're even looking at the church can do, your family should have sorted out for you. Right? Your family should be sorting out who you're going to marry. Now, I know that's going to upset a lot of people, but you won't find a marriage in the Bible that isn't arranged. Like, no one had to grow up worrying about, I wonder who I'm going to marry. Neither could you come in and say, guess what, I think I like someone. This is all this kind of very independent, modern, like, I've chosen the person, I've found the one for me. Who can you find in Bible days for yourself? You can't find no one for yourself back in those days. So there's something so broken about our families, so broken about our structure, that you're telling me I can't raise my child to make sure and secure that the man that's coming into her life is the right person for her. You think I'm leaving that to my daughter? Okay, so that sounds extreme. I'm just telling you how I'm running my ship at the moment. So you want to define these two words, you're already in a completely secular space. I'll come to this and say them. The thing about courtship, which has value, is that there is that intention to marry. I'm not letting nobody just take my daughter out because they're interested in her. Not while I have control over her. I don't care how interested. I need to know who you are. I, I, I can't be letting somebody into my daughter's life and I, I think he might be from a good family. No, I can't have any doubt about who's coming into my children's life. So courtship is more honorable, I think, as somebody has alluded to, because there's this idea that we're moving towards something that is future sustainable and, and upright. Don't let me talk for too long, Mikey. And I know that might upset a lot of folks, but I have two daughters and I've said to folks out there, especially in my social media circle, if you're raising your children like mine, stay in touch. Cause this ain't gonna be no random thing. All right. This is Monday Night Raw. You, you gotta bring it. So that's yeah, what, you have to say. We don't care if we upset nobody. Yeah, this is what it is. <laughs> so, okay. Um, Kendall had her hand raised, so go ahead. Hey everyone, um, yeah, to be honest, I was pretty much going to say what has already been said already. I raised my hand to ask if the words dating and courting is in the Bible. And I, I put the comment in the chat that, you know, these definitions can change over time over different generations. Like even I've heard now, instead of courting, it's intending like it's the, a new term that has come along so even throughout um different um ages even different areas you can you can have different names but the point that even um uh, minister joseph said was that you know these words are not really are not in the bible and but I did have a question to if, if it's going to be still on um, Minister Joseph about what you're saying about um, arranged marriage. So the, my understanding of arranged marriage would be that, you know, the, um, the child doesn't see um, the person they're going to marry and then one day they just get together and they're set to marry. I've, you know, I've, that, that would be my understanding of it. But it sounds like what you're saying is that if there is somebody that they may have gone to church with, gone to school with, in the community or whatever, that you are going to monitor that. You're going to do your own investigation and then kind of um, approve. Is that what you're, what, what you're saying? hundred percent think of um i think it was jacob um you know he, he was told to go down to his uncle's house 
right? So it was like, I know the family, yeah? Go down there. You will find somebody down there. Like if we can't give direction in that sense and have that level of control, like this is, I know we're just so modern, but it might be a social experiment on my part, but I am grooming my children to understand how these decisions get made in their life. Yeah, no, well, I, I, to I totally agree with that. And I think that is something that I have seen before, but I wouldn't say it has been called um, an arranged marriage. So I've, I've seen it been done that the parents are very much, they're, they're not explicitly in the relationship, but they know, you know, who the parents are. They get to know them. They have the family in the, the person around that they're um, interested in. And, you know, even as a family, they, they may grow together, even if it's, you know, you're from different circles and originally you don't know the family until your daughter has introduced you, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I, I think I, I very much uh, agree with that. And um, even that holds on to something that I said last week from, about accountability. It is very important to have your parents that they sometimes they can see something that you, you can't see. Um, and yeah, I think that's very important. So, um, um, just to clarify, uh, just to, just to further that um, a little bit, are we saying that the marriage itself is arranged? So the the union is arranged. It's like there's going to be this person, and that's this is what it is. Or is there um, uh, uh, an arrangement of like this is a person, or these are people? well, a person, sorry, that um, we trust, we know, we believe. Now you two get together, have a talk, see how things um, work. And if indeed our um, putting together was correct, then, then get married. Or are you saying this is the person, you're getting married on Thursday, it's done? More the, more the former, right? And, and let's, before we get too deep on this, we still have to account for the fact that this is not going to work for a lot of people. So I'm, I'm talking about the ideal. So let's just remember yeah. that. I'm not saying yeah. oh, this has to be for everything, for everyone. Um, I believe with the spirit of God abiding in you, like we can make these decisions. We can do this. We can get this right. We can, we can measure the interactions. We can, we can, you know, get meetings in the right settings. You know, here's a person that I think has been good. Here's a family that I know has got a good background. Here's what I recommend. Uh, why don't you go and spend some time or go out in groups or whatever? Um, it's not about them just seeing somebody one day and you know, here's the guy that I found for you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't believe in that. I don't think that's, that's normal. Um, even, even Jacob had a choice when he went down. Even though he was, he was cheated, he still had a choice of the sisters. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, by the way, it's this one. He was cheated into getting Mia, but actually he knew that he wanted Rachel. So these are, I mean, I'm extracting principles here, right? I'm just saying if we were going to be biblical, then what would the principles be? And that's, that's what I've come to understand in my own life. Um, okay. So would you say it's, it, 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 so obviously having known the families, it's introducing the idea to the, to the potential couple and leaving it to them? I guess as a still a control freak parent, you know, I'm, my, my children are gonna probably, one or the other is gonna upset me uh, rebel against me, uh, try to embarrass me. I, I don't know. So I wouldn't want to say, right, it's definitely going to be me saying, this is the one that here's your, you know, make your, take your pick this, of, of this person or that one. Um, I do believe there should be a degree of them having spent time and agreeing that, yes, this works and this is for us. Um, but at the same time, I, I kind of want to reserve the right to say, I see something here that's troubling me. and let, Let's have a talk. And when you <clears throat> just a uh, question is when you're considering, would you take um, their personalities into account? Uh, um, I don't. I'm less concerned about personality. That might sound stupid and old school. Um, I think spirituality, especially when we're talking about believers, is far more important than personality. Okay, but because the, the the love that you need to, to actually succeed in a marriage is not is not fancy in some way. The love you need to succeed in a marriage is really Christ's love. It's that forgiving love, that love that overlooks faults. So, from experience, 
no matter how much you're attracted to a woman, if you don't have that brand of love, love of yeah. God, to overlook, to forgive, to persevere, you don't have a marriage. So personalities for me, you might sound crazy. It's, I think it's somewhat overrated. In my own uh, situation, mm. I was looking for certain synergies. I did want someone who was also university educated. I didn't think that would be good for us or for me to be with somebody who actually wasn't educated to at least the level that I'm at or beyond. Um, so there are some compatibility things which you can say from a wisdom perspective, that would make sense that these two come together. But I yeah. would personally in this generation want to push, look away from too much of the eerie fairy stuff that doesn't keep a marriage together. If, you, if two people are spirit filled and actually know God for themselves, I think you can have a marriage. Um, mm. I, they have to be suitable. I, I get what you're saying about compatible because you can be compatible with many people, but they're not suitable for you. Um, they're not going to push you, but just somebody being a believer, I don't get that because you could clash completely with each other. Yeah, I mean, I we're, we're, we're going too much for me into, so let me just say this last and I'll come off. I think when we, if we get too, too theoretical, it's, it's not necessarily healthy, but I do, I do just want to make the point that the spirituality, that for instance, you have a relationship in the closet with God. Yeah, and that person has a relationship in the closet with God. You got something that if you step out of line with an individual, God starts to pull away from you. And that relationship that with him that you've loved so much now is in danger. Like what David says, you know, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. When you have to live a life to preserve your relationship with God, I just believe you, you can see things through and you can get along. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say you should force people who are clearly looking like they're not together, but neither do I want us to come away thinking here that just having all these natural compatibilities. All right. If, 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 if the, if the people are not soundly saved, that marriage is already in trouble. Um, um, sorry. I, I just wanted to say, because I am struggling to kind of match up what you said earlier about the fact that spirituality is a lot more important um, than personality. But yet for you, it was very important for you to marry somebody who was degree educated. I can't really see, you know, if, 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 if the spirituality was really the key thing, if somebody was not, if somebody was educated, but not degree educated, I mean, why wasn't that enough? And, and so I, I don't really understand. Okay. So, so in terms of um, spirituality versus um, compatibility, I would still say spirituality is the main thing. I think when you're out of the spirit though, when you're trying to have a conversation and you naturally use words that your partner just doesn't understand, I don't think that's good. So that's my preference. I'm saying that's what I wanted. I wanted to be in a situation where I could be pushed and have someone who was at a similar level intellectually um, just for conversating. So I'm not saying, oh, you shouldn't marry someone who's educated as far as you. I'm telling you that's for me. For me, that's, and that person could look anyway. They might have been, you know, underweight, overweight, dark skin, like doesn't matter. I'm talking about from one mind to another. How are we going to um, reason from day to day? Are we on the same? You, what you don't want to do is you don't want to marry someone who's so beneath you that it's like you're married to a child. You, you're going you're gonna to get driven crazy after that. You need someone who's, who's near you in your ability to reason, is my view. Mike, I think I'm taking up too much time. I don't know what's happening in my other meeting. <laughs> I know Crystal had something to say. Crystal, do you want to, you wanted to add to that? Okay. Um, I did have something to say, but I think at the moment, I just, I need to just not say anything at, at this present time. I think I was interrupted on purpose because what I was about to say, I don't think it was, I don't think I should have said it. So, yeah. No, please, like, don't feel... Go ahead, say, say, it's okay. <laughs> Go for it. No. Um, I was just, let me try and pretty it up. I was just basically thinking. No, how... this is Monday Night Raw. There's no pretty. Say, <laughs> say what you feel. <laughs> Mrs. Bailey, go for it, girl. <laughs> I just, in my head, I was just thinking, okay, so you're spiritually there and you know it's 
it's all great. But what if their personality, I mean, how are you supposed to live with somebody and be married and be under the same roof and be intimate with somebody whose personality you can't stand? It just, I just, I'm not sure. Mm. Um, I think personality is extremely I don't important. Just yeah, just to clarify, um, I can't speak for Elder Joseph, but yeah. I, I, what I gained from what he was saying is that there are some things that are leading and others, you might have like a 1A, yeah, and one, like, it's going to take the Holy Ghost for me to, to, to get with a Man City supporter, right? <laughs> take all of the Lord's, okay, <laughs> for example, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But there's some things, for example, there's some things that are leading. And of course, a person, the thing that's leading, as what I understood from Elder Joseph, is that they have to be saved. Yeah, you can't, the rest is like, nah, I mean, that's got to be, once, once, you know those, um, those um, yes, no um, kind of surveys that you do? And when you get to no, it's just dead end, nothing else happens. I think what Elder Joseph saying is, his first box is, but are you saved though? Yeah, and then after that, if there's a no, it's like, well, we need. There's nothing else to discuss. But if it's yes, you are saved. Cool. Um, you support Man United or any other team that's not Arsenal, Liverpool, or Man City. Yes. Then, um, do you have you been to university? Yes. Do you like? Are you? Do you? Do you know? Do you eat meat? Do you like to go for walks? Yes, yes, yes. Or how do you want to raise your kids? Yes, yes. We agree. So it's not that he was saying you must be. You must be. I'm only marrying someone who is on the mountain yeah. and save, but your personality could be madness. That's not what I gained from what Elder Joseph was saying. I don't know if he's too busy to um, say yes or no or, or understand. So I just want to clarify. He did, he did, do, he did, he did put a round of applause there when you were okay, explaining. Okay. Can I also add that we have to remember a lot of our ideas of mm -hmm. romance is taken from Greco-Roman ideas of love, which are not biblical. Mm -hmm. Like I had someone tell me that um, love is um, a, it's a, that fuzzy feeling. No, it's not. Love is a choice that you have to make every day. And, that you, and, and I'm not married, but I know with God, love is a choice. Because I have to make that choice to choose to love God and to choose to obey him. And I think our ideas are too much fashioned on the music and the, the, um, the movies and the ideas that we've been sold. A lot of them do not line up with what the scriptural definition of love is. And so I understand what he's saying about person about being saved over personality. Like I, I got from that, he wasn't saying that personality is nothing. He was saying that being saved and having a relationship with God first is more important. Because I always say this, I don't understand how two Holy Spirit filled saved people can get divorced when you understand what forgiveness is. You see what I'm saying? I don't I don't I don't understand that. So um Rory just said marriage is definitely not a fairy tale at all. We'll come to that next time. <laughs> Rory wants to but, share. Yeah. Dion had her hand up. <laughs> oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, that's okay. I just want, I, I think Vila said everything that I wanted to say. I was just cut because that's what I got from what Pastor Joseph said as well. So it's, it's cool. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dion. Something that did come out of um, last time as well, which is kind of connected. Um, and I'm interested into what our married couples do have to say about this. Someone asked last week, does God really tell you or show mm -hmm. you who your wife is or who your husband should be? Um, what does it look like when a person is being shown to you because they are? Married? This is a little bit in, um, sorry, can you, can you mute the mic for me, please? Yeah, this is a little bit, um, what I would have to say, I'd have to preface this with, okay, imagine that the ideals of, um, let's say, the, the cultural or biblical way or the way that Elder Joseph was talking about was not in place. Your parents did not have you set up and stuff, right? Let's say. So that's, that's maybe not what's happened in your case. But does God really help you? Yes, this is the one. Yes, this is the person. And what does that look like um, when someone is being shown to you? That makes sense. 
Or what does it sound like? Is there a voice that God says this well, what is the one? Yeah, what, does that, what does that look like? There's a person all, all of a sudden there's a light that they glow from heaven and they are it's like oh that one they transfigured. Yeah, exactly. I'll give someone I'll give someone a chance to go before me on this one, but I do have an answer, but I don't want to take it all up. Okay. Uh, does anyone Sam, have to bring um Sam just said that God didn't show him but it, he um he confirmed it for him. Uh, I, 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 yes, I believe I'm, 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 up for yourself, Sam. Talk up. Tell us. <laughs> to get involved, but watch. It, obviously, the Bible talks about you know. Um, obviously, he's talking about going to find your wife. Um, in occasions, um, you know, I believe God can do everything. So for me to turn around and say God don't show people their wife, you know, I'll be contradicting myself. So I believe God can, whether He does it for everybody, no. And the reason why I say that is because I'm part of everybody and he didn't do it for me. But what he did when I was in the relationship, I prayed and I confirmed, I said, God, I don't want to waste my time. So it either is or it isn't. And I said, I don't want none of this. I want it in a dream. I said, I don't want it in a dream. I said, you tell me raw. If it is, if it is. And I remember going to the altar and someone said it into my ear and it was raw like that. So for me, that was the confirmation. And he gave me the confirmation that I was looking for. Now, I know everyone says, you know, sometimes God doesn't give it in the way that it is. But I said, God, I ain't playing. Whether you show me this way, show me in a dream, I'm still not believing it. The only way you're going to get me to believe this is giving me the raw answer that I need. So no, he didn't show me, but he confirmed it. Yes, this is this is Pastor Mark's son. Brother Sam, yes, he did. <laughs> 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 So, oh, respect, respect, respect. That's my, that's my friend right there. Bless yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing, Brother Sam. Is, is, um, is there? I love the way. And you know what? God does talk to us the way that we receive it. So, if you need God to talk to you raw, like Sam says, um, I believe that God will speak to you that way. Is there any any other um, of our married friends who? I'm going to ask a really difficult question, actually, as well. Was any, has, is there anybody who can share, if they feel to, where they were courting someone, they believed or felt like they had the yes and the confirmations or the yes, this is from God, and it didn't happen or didn't work out? That's a tough one. I don't know if anyone gonna, I'm just going to leave that out there then. You don't have to, if there is that, because I've heard such stories and I question and stuff like that. But okay, I'm just going to throw that out there. If anyone wants to comment on that a bit later, yeah. they can do. <laughs> well, sometimes, it, sometimes it doesn't look like you being thirsty and trying to get with everybody who you think is available. Sometimes it's you stopping and just serving God. You know, um, and that's how I came to get to know my wife. I mean, it's crazy because we went to school together, but I don't remember her. I remember her and my brother being the best of friends. Didn't see each other for years and years and years. I went to church. They just happened to be there. Holy God. And so the, um, the question that you just um, asked, Beulah, like, it's mad because I was really trying to get back with my ex. And so... In that, I was like, this is it. And I was, I was thinking about it so much that I was even beginning to dream about it and thinking that God was speaking to me that way. And I was like, yeah, he wants me to go post a letter. Yeah, he wants me to, you know, send a text. Um, and really, it was none of those things. It was me. It was me convincing myself that that was the direction that God was trying to take me in. And it wasn't until I said, you know what? I'm not even looking. All I'm going to do is serve God. And so I made the decision to just serve him. I wasn't interested in getting married. I wasn't interested in dating, courting, none of that. I was just interested in getting to know God even more. Um, and so in that, God began to speak to me and say, yeah, this is the woman for you. And even in that, I said, I, when I approached that, um, I said, I'm interested. Um, I've spoken to God. I've got my answer. Now I need for you to go away and go speak to, to God and see what he's saying. And just bringing in what um, uh, this brother Joseph was saying about, um, you know, arranged marriage, so to speak, and knowing your community. When I took it to um, my dad's, my wife's um, dad, he was having none of it. 
And so he was saying, yo, um, what you need to do is go away and get these things in order um, and then come back to me. Um, and so I went away and I did some of the things that he asked me to do. I had already done, you know, the majority of them before I approached him. And so when it came back, it was just him wanting to know that who his daughter was marrying was a proper person. It wasn't just this random guy who he believed to just come off, um, come off the road and didn't grow up in church. But he wanted to know that I was a genuine guy, that I had a house, that I had a proper job, that I had some savings, that I was, you know, um, a strong minded dude for his daughter. And I didn't understand that at the time, and I was I was vexed. But after I married her and I was, um, you know, I built a relationship with him, I understood completely because now that I have a daughter of my own, big man, no one ain't coming in my yard coming to pick up my daughter anyhow. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Can I, can, I, that can I make a key point that what he said there? He said he went to his um, wife to be and said, God spoke to me, but you need to speak to God. There's a lot of men going around and said, God spoke to me but they're not in instructing the, the, the woman to speak to God for herself. I think that is a very key principle. He actually told the woman he wanted to be with, I need you to get confirmation. That's key. And then yeah. the father thing, I love it. Like that's, that's what I would expect. If, if my wife's father wasn't, you know, potential wife's father wasn't doing that, I wouldn't be sure yeah. I would even want to be in that family. Cause it's like, what's well, going on here? Away like that. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, and I love I love what Brother Tafari was saying about it's that seek first principle, and I think just in general as young people in our lives, sorry to sidetrack it, but we do a lot of things. We're looking for a lot of things, or we want answers to a lot of things, and we've just not yet been seeking God first in general in everything. So we only tap into we knock on God's door like God, I want this. If we even do that much. But the principle is seek first, because then even when you do have a question, if you don't seek God, seek first his kingdom and God and have a relationship with God, how do you even know what God's voice sounds like for you when you come with a, then a big major life decision? So I think, yeah, that seek first principle. I love it. It's fantastic. When I've started exercising that in my life, God just, everything else, like the scripture says, was added unto me. So thank you so much for sharing that, brother um, Tafari. So, um, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, did anyone have anything else to add, add to, to that? I can, I, I can jump in on the, t okay. the two questions. Um, yeah. I'll start with, um, does God show you your wife? And I like the answer that was given okay. earlier on. Obviously, the scripture says he that finds a wife finds a, good thing. Uh, finds a good thing. So there's an element, perhaps, of looking, searching, you know, eyes open. I think when God's really in it, it's almost like, and maybe married men can agree with this, is a sequence of events that leads to it, which feels like a setup by God, you know? Um, so for instance, I was a young man, still about my last year of uni. And um, to be honest, I had created some defense mechanisms against marrying people that were around me because I didn't want to marry anyone. I didn't want to marry anybody from my church. That was my thing. Um, <clears throat> they felt like sisters to me. Um, you know, some of them little sisters and, you know, I just, I just didn't feel like that was it. So we'd go out to, to buffets and whatnot and people start talking about, oh, so what's your ideal wife? And, and I'd be like, yeah, well, she's got to be from a completely different country. <laughs> she's got to have these languages. And so I created a lot of, um, barriers. It was kind of fake, but I did have a list. I did have a list. And, um, I was, remember I was walking down the back of church, church was done. And it's just weird. The Lord just said to me, um, um, he said, your wife will be better than your list. And I'm like, I literally, I'm turning, I'm like turning around. I'm like, would you, what? So when he said your wife, I'm like, that kind of puts something in my spirit that there's a woman that's mine. Like, I don't even need to have this list that says, let me just check and see that this is the one. I realized years later, you don't even know what to put on your list. You don't even know yourself. <laughs> Right, you don't even know how God wants to perfect you, and God usually puts the woman in your life that is gonna actually pull all the trash out of you eventually. <laughs> right, He's putting the woman that's gonna help you to be perfected and to come in His image of life. So that's a, that's another story. So the Lord said that to me a few weeks before I met my wife. Um, he rebuked me on on something else I used to say when I was a young person. I used to say, "Marrying no one who's ugly." Now I'm not saying my wife's ugly; she, she's not an ugly woman. But the Lord had to beat that out of me. 
the Lord stopped me one day while I was praying, totally unconnected once again to what I'm praying about. And he asked me, so what is ugly? And I felt, I felt as small as a pin. I felt that God was so disgusted that I would look at somebody and call his creation ugly. So God had to beat some certain things out of me, not because he was preparing me for someone who I wouldn't like the look of, but sometimes we just have some nasty ways about us, right? Um, and then maybe your eyes open a bit better, you look at people differently. And then um, this sister comes over like a, a, like a week after God telling me your wife would be better than this and um, comes over from Canada, visits our church. She's about my age. And I'm like, I'm keeping one eye open. And what I'm looking for, I'm looking to see how she's going to worship when, when it gets down. Because, you know, we rejoice in our churches, we praise. And she kicked off her shoes, Sister Bula. She kicked off her shoes. Yeah. And went in the aisle. I'm like, yay. <laughs> I, this is a worshiper. So, like, that's, that's one tick, right? We had all night prayer meeting. Just happened to be we was in preparation for some meetings. And um, she was there and she could pray. I'm like... Okay, this is good. Now, my dad said to me once before, and I used to despise him for it. He said, don't marry a woman that come from nowhere. And I thought he was being hard. I thought he was being horrible. I thought he was being nasty. He says, make sure they have good parents. Make sure they come from a good home. And I literally said to him one day, but what if God wants me to marry a Mary Magdalene? Like, surely someone has to marry Mary Magdalene. You know, someone with a past. And he'd be like, you understand what I'm saying when you get older. <laughs> <laughs> so um, th this lady was a pastor's daughter in the end <clears throat> God was preparing this woman for me for my ministry for the things that I'd need um, further down the road I didn't see her she didn't speak the languages I wanted my wife to speak she did play keys which was you know one thing but like my list was rubbish compared to God's my list was just totally trash because I never knew what God wanted so I think there's a sequence of events that happens when God is really in it the final testimony is that I started to have feelings. She flew back to Canada. Back then, there was no Facebook. Yeah, I had to phone parents' house yeah, <laughs> to speak to her, make sure she's right by the phone at the time that I'm ringing all them things. All we had was email and, 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 and long-distance calls. And um, begin to have feelings now. I could feel it. Like my oh, sanctified, oh, Lord, my sanctified soul. My sanctified oh. soul was getting uh, <laughs> feelings. restless. Yes. You know? <laughs> And um, I was getting troubled because now my, my thoughts are being disrupted. I've never been here for a long time. Apart from, you know, the high school little tiffs that you have when you think you're in love with somebody. Like this was the first time in years I've had a proper distraction. And I said, God, you need to show me. I said, tonight, God, I need a vision. And I'd only say the one thing. I asked him the wrong question. I asked him, it's a stupid young person's question. Do I love her? <laughs> Uh, Lord, let me know. Do I really love her? Because I thought at that point, if you love, love is the most important thing. If you really love someone, what an idiot I was anyway. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the question I asked. And I said, God, show me tonight. I felt like Gideon. I felt I was going to get my answer. And you know what? God gave me a dream. And I'm in a courtroom situation. And it's like my wife is on trial. My wife-to-be is on trial. And this man <laughs> gets up and he starts off by saying, I just want to announce to everybody today that we're here to try such and such a person for X, Y, and Z to see if she's really the right person for Joseph Mullins. <laughs> and I stood up and her mom was sitting beside me in tears in the dream. And I stood up and I said, no, I don't need to hear. I don't need to hear anything about her past. I don't even need to know it, right? So God was saying to me, yeah, you love her because you're willing to overlook her past. I'm answering the question you asked me. I felt like I had one shot and I wasted it. At the time, I took it as confirmation. Somebody asked, why did I say, why did I ask, do I love her? Because in my mind's eye, that was the most important thing at the time. Like if I love her, then that's the, you know, as I said, I was 21, or maybe 20. So, um, but in that, I got a dream. I felt that God was at least giving me some confirmation. He didn't have to answer me. Um, he was showing me that I had the right instincts and attitude towards her. So that's my little journey to how I got married. So why wasn't it the most important thing that you loved her? I think that's what the person wants to know. Oh, why isn't it? Because, because at that point, your love is only a feeling. At that point, it's not tested. You won't know what love looks like until you hit certain things in marriage. Yeah? Certain things you don't prepare for. My other meetings just ended. I usually dominate that meeting. My boss. Let me just put my camera on now. So, 
um, yeah, you don't know what's going to, you don't know what's going to happen in your marriage. You don't know. And so love is really proven when, when the partner says I've had enough. <laughs> When your wife yeah. turns into Satan and you still have to love her, that's when you, that's when you know you really about this life. Oh God, not Satan, beloved. And not only that, not only not only that. Was that Tafari? Know, Sorry. What, yeah. Well, what did you say, Tafari? What did Tafari say? I, I said, "Oh God, not, not Satan, beloved." <laughs> okay. When she turns into one of his emissaries, then lower down. Yeah. So love, love at that point is an idea. It's an idea at that point, and it can't be anything more, and you can't. You know, you don't want to take away the joy of that phase, right? You do feel the butterflies. You are feeling on, on top of the world. And so we don't want to just undermine that. But that is the feeling of being at the start of a relationship. You know, it can be infatuation. And so it's real and you can feel it, but that doesn't keep the marriage together. Yeah, that doesn't, that's not what holds it. What holds it is how you, how you stay together for adversity. Um, do you grow in your thoughtfulness for each other? you know, and you're, and you're caring. For instance, what does my wife like in the morning? And, you know, what does she like to eat? What does she like to drink? Am I thinking about if I'm going to the kitchen now, I'm just going to get something for myself. You know, these, it, it sounds very small and trivial, but love is proved in how you care for people over time. You know, and, and you, you know, it's love, love takes notes, not of wrongs, but it takes notes of how to help, how to please, and how to con continually build and make a better marriage. That's why how you feel at the start. Yes, you want to feel in love, but you don't know the strength of that love until the storm hits. Okay. Sorry, Charlotte's raised her hand. Mm. Do you have a question, Charlotte? Yeah, um, I just wanted to give, you know, a, a different point of view. I'm not married myself. Um, I'm still um, trying to figure out um, what's going on with life, really. So I'm still in that path at the moment. However, I do think um, we are getting a bit concerned about people and everyone here you know everyone's that's given their experiences we're all just people so your experience works for you and that's great but i think we should be referring back to the bible because it's a great theory to have a list to have other things but if we're really walking the walk as christians shouldn't the only person we be listening to is god shouldn't it be him that tells us rather than instructions from other people i'm just at a bit of a cross point because these things okay fair enough um brother joseph how you raise your children um you've got that as they're younger so you can have that path with them and see how it grows but i'm 27 so what does that look like for me if that's the options that you're giving just a just a question yeah, no, fair, fair point. And I did try to preface what I was saying by here's the ideal. And I'm, you know, just answering that question at the time. You know, what do these words mean? And I just try to basically walk it back to say that if they mean nothing according to the Bible, according to the Bible, this is what it should look like. Okay, so for a 27 year old, you, you're in a different, you're in a different place altogether. And um, the only thing I would say, going back to what Beulah said, which was very beautiful and powerful about seeking first the kingdom, like that is the remedy. I don't want to end the call right but seek first the kingdom of god and to be righteous as he is righteous all his righteousness and everything else gets added to you right so that is the principle what helped me in because even when i was caught in right it was still new um there was no guidelines by the church you know it was kind of rogue i'm sending emails you know <laughs> to start with at, in private no one told me that was appropriate but guess what I got to a point where we had, I think, maybe the second phone call. And I, I felt in my spirit when we crossed a bridge, you know? You know when you've talked to somebody and you've talked to a point where now this is not just a sister in church anymore. This has entered a whole new environment. Saints, you need the Holy Spirit in your life to convict you and to warn you and to pull you up and say, now's the time to become accountable. Now's the time to take this thing from being in secret. Because sometimes we can amble into things like, and all of a sudden, whoa, you know, here I am. Like you didn't, you were just talking and then one conversation led to another. And now you're talking something that only people going should talk about. What does the Holy Ghost do in you when you hit that spot? Well, we knew when we hit that spot over that telephone conversation, we said, we need to talk to our parents at this point. Yeah, because we were just 20 and 21, right? We knew, we felt it. So 
Is that a cop out? No, it's a beginning of, of, of an answer. I think let the Holy Spirit truly lead you and guide you in your interactions, right? We say, search me, O oh Lord, and know my heart today. Every morning should be a search me, Lord moment. I pray that like, Lord, if I have anything I've done wrong, show me. If there's something that I've done that I need to know so I cannot do it again and fix it, show me. All right. If I've seen that I don't know, help me. That's the way we need to live. When we don't have the scaffolding of parenting and churches, God is with us to help us and guide us and lead us through interactions. Can the church do more? I think it's part of the conversation coming next about what churches can do, what they, what they should do. But even when we give you those answers, you might find that your church is not up to snuff. Your church can't deliver that kind of program. Your church can't deliver that kind of premarital counseling. So what do we do? It's a real problem and it's something that was worth discussing. I don't want to try and give it all in one answer. I hope that begins to be the beginning of the answer, my sister, that as a grown woman, as a spiritual person, you have a navigator and you have a guide to help you through these things. All right. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you very much, Elder, Elder Joseph. That's, that's really great advice. The Holy Ghost has to lead us. He will lead us into all truth, into all things. So it's important. Um, I do want to address something that was very important. Um, I know it was attached to marriage itself, but I think this, this is very necessary to kind of gauge before you get there. So um, we were talking about what does it mean to be unequally yoked um, and this kind of stretched into can someone who's not filled, for example, marry someone that is filled or vice versa, if that makes sense. Is that part of being unequally yoked? Um, how do you gauge is, is the yoking, is the unequalness of the yoking something that, um, like Elder Joseph said, um, is to do with, maybe for him that's um, uh, university education. For me, like I said, anyhow, he supports Arsenal. I just don't know what I'm going to do. I just don't know. A lot of prayer and fasting is going to need to be done. I just... Lord of mercy, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so when the scripture talks about, I do, I want to I find the verse actually. I don't like saying the scripture. I do want to make sure. I think it's, uh, it's not, no, it's not Hebrews 13 4. If someone could just um, uh, grab that out for me, that would be appreciated. But what is, when you're dating someone, is that unequally. You know, in the context of the scripture, it is talking about somebody who is, you know, light and darkness can't mix. So we know that the scripture is saying someone who is saved cannot be dating um, or courting. What terms you want to use are someone who is, is not saved. Yeah, that's straight off. But does that extend to anything else? Is there a personal element um, to it? Um, anyone who's, yeah, married... Can you give us some insights there? Brother Andrew, why are you scratching your face? Like, say, say, man, say. <laughs> say I'm not going to let you escape. <laughs> what's Sorry. Good, what's um, good, everyone? I hope you will. <laughs> Blessings. Um, <laughs> Andrew, can you start by telling us how long you've been married? Um, so, it's going to be... Um, sorry, excuse the children in the background. But, yeah... Um, for me, it will be almost five years. Um, five years in September. Great. Um, married to Sherry. And yeah, just... So with regards to being unequally yoked, um, just one second. Can you go and say in the living room, please? Is that right? Cheers. Um, so yeah, being unequally yoked, I think for me, the someone gave me an analogy. Let's say you're running a race, right? Like in terms of your spiritual your spiritual like your spiritual journey uh, one thing i notice is that you could be running pursuing christ and i believe that the person who when you look over to your left and your right that is running at the same speed that should be the person you should consider um, continuing the journey with i say that because it, there's so many different dynamics but i want to take a dynamic of you you as someone that is holy ghost filled going hard for the kingdom and and stuff like that trying to get with someone who, I don't know, for, this is for me personally, getting someone who doesn't have the mind of the kingdom as you may have, even if they're saved, because you can be unequally yoked even when you're both saved. 
that's me personally. That's what I believe. Um, but it's just not worth trying to get into a situation where the person's not saved and you're trying to win them. To, now, I, I'm not saying that there's not precedent for that. There they, they are. There are examples. But for me personally, it's not worth trying to help develop someone's spiritual life to get them to a stage where you can feel comfortable marrying them. Um, I, I just don't think that was your responsibility. But that's just me. That's just me personally. Wow, sorry, Sister Rachel just put in the in the, in the chat flirt to convert. I like that. That's wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just about to put that to you, you know. Just, just about to put that. that. Yeah, just to, just just to, just to that clarify, that. she's not writing that to say let's do this. She's saying that's the that's that's uh, a way some people are doing it. They're saying yeah, yeah that's way. like oh, I know that they would. Is a church I know that is. Um, when they're witnessing, I'm not going to say the church, but they actually send their most beautiful young sisters to specifically no, go to the no, room no, no, no. and um, bring them to church. And then when they get to church, they get preached the word of conviction. Like you see that stuff, stuff like that exists. It's crazy. Bring them in. <laughs> <laughs> is that, is that the by any means necessary, Malcolm? <laughs> 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 Um, yeah, I, 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 I hear that. Um, thank you, Brother Andrew. Sorry, thank you for, for, for what you're saying. Yeah, there has to be a kind of, just in general, I suppose, um, I, I, I'm not sure if when you who are married, when you were courting, um, what stage did you start talking about how, uh, how, how do you see raising your family? How do you see raising your children? Because that can be a, a, a mismatch as, as well, right? Like, um, you ask, sorry, you're asking me? Yeah, I'm asking you um, yeah, if you could ask the first or, or anyone else because, so, um, yeah. I think it was from when, see, I met Sherry, I met Sherry September 2011. Um, and when we started talking seriously, it was by like November, basically November, basically December. And I said from the from the very beginning, because in all in all in all honesty, um, I didn't want to get into another situation where I'm wasting time and I haven't laid everything out on the table, or she doesn't know where I stand. I didn't want it to be an adoption. So from the jump, I said, look, this is where I stand. This is me. This is me. Can you, what what are you saying? Because if it's not in line, then do you know, like it's a pleasure to know you, but I don't want to go into something that is just going to be another. Um, um, and when you say that, sorry, can I ask, can, if you don't mind sharing? Yeah, yeah, sure. When you say this, you had that conversation, this is me, this is what I'm about, this is where I stand. Are you saying that you said to her, listen, my sister, I think you be, I'm just, I'm feeling a feel and I want to get to it, but if you're not on that page, I'm moving out. Or did you say to her, this is what I stand for. This is, these are my principles. This is my core character. If you cannot agree with this, then I'm walking away. What was the... So, so so I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't even say character. I, I, it was more pr the principal side, um, the type of upbringing that I have as well, especially being in Christ. I just wanted to see where her head is at um, with different dynamics of how we would raise children, um, what the, her relationship with Christ is like, um, how, she, she, how we could be able to support each other within the kingdom work and also what type of ambition does she have and what can she add to me? What, what can I add to her? Um, we just pretty much just laid everything out on the table like that. Um, for every, almost every aspect, that, listen, that conversation was seven and a half hours long. Um, so, so yeah, we, we touched pretty, almost everything. Um, and we just so wanted children, to be totally, totally transparent. So children came up actually quite early, like family yeah. life came up very early in from, your- From the jump, from the jump, from the jump. Okay, wow, wow, okay. Thank you. Is any, anyone else? Um, uh, Tafare, uh, Crystal and Sam. Is there anyone else? Sorry, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm missing anyone else that's um, married. I'm trying to see. I can't see all the names and the stuff. But yeah, anybody else who would like to um, take on that? I think early, uh, I think in the beginning stages of you know you you um caught in dating, you you toy with the idea about kids and how you're gonna raise them and you know these different type of scenarios that there are you know, but it's not until 
you know, um, you you put the ring on the finger or even just a little bit before that, you start to really dive into those things and you say, yeah, we spoke about this before, but how do you, how do you really feel about this? Because I know the type of way that I want to raise my kids, you know, um, and so I didn't know, I didn't know how Sherry felt um, about kids, how she wanted to raise those kids or any, anything, um, you know, pertaining to uh, our, our future really. And it wasn't until we had a real raw conversation about these things and we sat down and, you know, we hashed it out. Like, like Andrew said, he spent seven hours, maybe I spent seven weeks, you know, um, talking about these things, you know, cause I wanted to be certain, you know, um, cool. and just to throw in there about, you know, the preferences and stuff, so, you know, we have to start telling ourselves that we don't want certain things or we, we're not allowed to want certain things. I knew that I wanted a black woman who was talented, um, who I thought was beautiful, who had ambition, you know, and no one was going to tell me any, no one was going to tell me any different. And if she wasn't those things, uh, we weren't getting together because I know, yeah, that I built the table and now I need you to bring those chairs over so we can sit down and eat at the table that I just built. Hey! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just... <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, just got, no, I just got slain. <laughs> I built the table. Did you hear that? Are you feminist? Are you feminist? I built the table, yeah? That's no, biblical I'm manhood. Like that. All the feminists. <laughs> Gun male, shot. male leadership <laughs> and headship is biblical. You know, get, like that. That. get that in your Robo, head. Robo, how, how old were you, Robo, when you got married? Uh, how old was I? 25? 25? 20, 20, 24? 24. Yeah. Wow, wonderful, wonderful. God bless you for that. Um, yeah, yeah, that was, wow. I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing but yes from me for that. Um, I've heard a lot from a lot of brothers on this section, and I feel like there's some, some wives in the corners being shady, not saying anything. <laughs> and I'm just wondering if there are any wives out there who also have something to say on, on, on that aspect. What was your, um, yeah, when, when was it important for you to be talking about how you're going to build life together, when, when you're going to, yeah, what was leading for you? What was, une what was unequally yoked for you? What did that also mean for you? Um, I, do, I want to read the scripture, sorry, just before, because I said I was trying to find it. It was 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14, and it's very clear. It says, be not... Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, right? For what fellowship hath unrighteousness with, with righteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? So that's, that's and what, what concord hath Christ with um, Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And it goes on. So, um, but yeah, was there a personal element for you? What, is, what was your unequally yoked? If, that, if that's a question. Um, this is from uh, someone in the chat as well. Sorry, I did I did see something from from Sister Maureen um, um, Horton. I did want to read that out as well. She says, "I was praying one day and God just asked me to ask regarding a husband. I did, and then some years later, He showed me someone from my church who is the total opposite <laughs> of what I asked for. My Lord, when I asked Him why I'm I'm with Him, God showed me that my husband." though very challenging at times to live with, would help me to develop the strength and character that God's bringing out in me. That is incredible. That's really beautiful. And that's something also, I think, I was kind of saying um, a bit earlier. Um, so thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you. Um, there is a question in the chat. Um, it seems like a lot of men are going to find their wives. Are we women doing the same? or just making ourselves available, like, um, <laughs> to be found, or should we be doing the same or not? I think that's a, that's a great question. Um, a wife I, should not be, a wife should not be looking for a wife, but just, just exactly. saying. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Or a husband. <laughs> that's they right. Found. <laughs> he that find that findeth, not she that findeth. <laughs> ah, come on. There's a reason why God don't want you to make that choice. Yeah, they're just playing. They ain't preaching this at women's convention. This is what they need to be preaching. <laughs> <laughs> be looking for our 
our, our husband or um, someone else says, or what should we be doing in the Seek league? ye first. That's a good question, <laughs> Sister Rachel. <laughs> Sister Crystal, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just saying um, to Sister Rachel, that was that was a good question. What what do we do? What do the single ladies do? Sister, what were you I'm, doing in the meantime? What were you doing? <laughs> I was just being me. I'm not. No, honestly, I honestly was just being myself. I was just... We met at convocation, so... Italian service. Oh right. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know how to answer that because I just I was just being myself and he just he just came and pursued me in that way. I I don't feel like I had to do anything kind mm. of thing. Yeah. Can I ask a question. Were you busy though? Was you like Busy was or was you just waiting around? Um, Are you active in church? You Were you active in life? Did you, was you pursuing a career? Were you active in church? Like what was you doing? Okay, so um, I had just finished university, um, just got my nursing degree, degree just starting work. Um, I was actually in a little bit of a situationship at the time but I didn't think it was going to work out anyway so I wasn't really that wasn't going to work I knew it wasn't going to work is this a hashtag entanglement uh, let's not do let's that's a whole other story that's a whole other show <laughs> <laughs> I so, thought, let me not say that word carry on, carry on. <laughs> not entanglement is a situationship okay well, but carry on yeah go ahead. I just I knew it wasn't going to work so I was just, just living life for myself, get, you know, no, getting to know myself more as the woman I'm becoming, um, focusing on my career, just, just being me. I don't, I don't know what else. I wasn't, I wasn't actively searching around um, for anybody. Um, but, I was just, sorry. And, and just, I'm going to pick you up a little bit as well because you were minister you were ministering you were working in the kingdom in different ways right you were whether it was music ministry whether it was um teaching sunday school whether it was leading on wednesday nights in bible study you were busy in in the house of the lord and more than just like being up there and doing stuff you were ministering one-on-one -on -one in the way that god you were just your hands were busy for god in general as well yeah. right absolutely yeah Absolutely. I remember though, one, um, I'm a dreamer, so I, God communicates me th to me through dreams. So I remember one night, um, God, God, I heard God so profound and he was like, pray, you need to pray for your husband and you need to start praying now. And I thought, it felt strange getting on my knees and praying for a husband. It felt very odd, but that's what God had instructed me to do. And it wasn't long after that, that I started praying those prayers that um, Sam started, you know, pursued me and we started talking and stuff. Um, but yeah, I thought that was very important to just highlight. God told me to pray to him for a husband because even though it wasn't something that was like filling my head at the time, I was like, oh, I need a man. I'm 20, I'm 20 something. I need to find someone to settle down with. But God just told me that I need to pray for my husband. It's something that I, I would like in the future, so I need to pray for it. Just as if, you know, you, you want something, if you, if you want a job or you, you need to pray for those, you need to pray for a husband because that's what your heart desires then. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That's wonderful. So prayer, prayer is, yeah, this, this pre-prayer is really interested that we, what you're talking about. So, um, but you were led into that prayer, right? You're saying you're saying you were you were you were led into praying. Someone has actually asked, "What does praying for?" Uh, I think Sister Crystal said, "Praying for your husband, not praying for a husband." There is a difference. Can I clarify, um, Sister Crystal? It wasn't that. Wait, wait, were you saying, "God, I would like a husband. Please send him to me," or were you kind of prophetically praying and saying, "God, um, I'm praying for my husband." Um, keep him, um, uh, yeah, bring him to me, what, what, bring us into, what was, what, can you clarify for us what praying for a husband or praying for your husband meant for you? 
Okay, Sister B, I think it's, it was definitely the latter. It was more like speaking it into existence. Um, it was more prophetic. It was more like my husband is waiting for me. I know he is. Um, Lord, please show me who he is. Um, and let help me to prepare myself um, for that, 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 um, what you call it, that relationship and prepare him for that relationship. Um, and let us both come together as you have ordained. It was more speaking it into existence um, and, and th that kind of thing. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that's what it was. Okay. You, I need you to address the, the previous questions or comments with regarding to sisters serving and they're not being men. Yeah, I'm not reading that chat. Sister V. Okay, so let me read it. Anyone who knows Sister V says no Sister V. Okay, so she can explain it. Okay, bring it out, please. Unmute your mic, sis, and tell us. We bless the name of the Lord Jesus for he called us to triumph. <laughs> for real. Um, no, it was just that at the point where um, it was said that um, uh, when, when Sister Daly was um, expressing like how she found um, Brother Sam and like you guys were like kind of like laughed it off in terms of saying, oh, were you, you know, busy or what have you, do you know what I mean? And that's, it's like, you can't really laugh it off in terms of like that because there are so many serving sisters who are there and so many brothers are just basically overlooking them. I don't know whether it's a case of them being intimidated or feeling inadequate or in any way. And not that, you know, that anyone's trying to make any guy feel like that. But if they're not seeking serving sisters, then what are they seeking? And that is the, and that is the fact. And if you even look in the demographics of, us, of the church, and I say the black church because that's what I, that's why I see you now. The church is female. The future right now is the churches are being upheld by the females. There are congregations of churches that have just females in there, either widows or women who have had to separate from their from their wives, from their from their husbands, and even you know single single parent sisters as well. And yes, if you can, brother Andrew, you can respond in terms of that because it's something that a lot of sisters are. I see older than myself and in my age group that are really feeling hurt by it. not say hurt but it helps in something that is really impacting on their insecurities and people kind of prey on those kind of insecurities and think guys really know that that you know if they see a sister serving that it's something that actually makes makes them feel like they have a uh, I'm gonna put that they have the monopoly on a sister's fulfillment in that way I know God's enough for me and I'm enough for God I know that it is a desire of my heart to be married and to have a family because I have an empire over here that God has sustained me in order to build and to put my hand to you know to create a safe and what a safe environment for, and a thriving environment as well however it's not to say that I wouldn't want to bring or I want to want to bring someone to this table or I wouldn't want to build a table with somebody else or a table that they have you know that could be to you know prepare a meal at but my mindset and the mindset of some of some of these Pentecostal Romeos, because that's the next thing, yeah. Because you're saying about to convert, that's one thing. But the Pentecostal Romeos too, who know the desires of good sisters' hearts, and they go out there and they're just trying like play it out. So that's just my few words in Jesus' name. Thank you. Th those weren't few words, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Andrew, please come no, in. That was few for me. That was few for me. Okay, well done for being circumspect. We, we, we thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're honest on that. Um, Brother Andrew, can you um, come in there? You want to come in? Um, one of the most painful things I've noticed, right, in, 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 just to advocate for the woman in church, is that I don't believe that church on the grand scheme of things has successfully provided and or been able to network within the kingdom um, for the sole intention of um, providing people with spouses. I don't think they've done that before. And then it also leads to the next point where I don't believe that churches have successfully um, taught men how to be men um, and, made, and made church like a masculine thing. Do you get what I mean? 
um, I think church is very emotional, which caters more to females. And this is from a man's perspective. And this is, um, so they were not inclined to come to church. So then now you don't have men in church. Then you don't have men that is there to marry a wonderful woman. So yeah, I, I, on the, on, the, on the grand scheme of things, yeah, we haven't been able to network. I don't know if pastors are scared that they might lose that sister or lose some sisters because they may leave to go, go to the church that the man is with. I don't know. But from what I've seen, we haven't been able to network. I'm not a pastor, but I can, if I ever was in that position, I would have a, I will sure I would, I would have had relationships with other churches to say, look, I've got a beautiful uh, young sister here who is single and this particular age, I can vouch for her. Um, in terms of our integrity and blah, blah, blah. I'm sure you have a man of God. Because we, we, we have so much to say against arranged marriages, but that is still an arrangement. And I, I think it's amazing. But yeah, so in, in conclusion for me, I just don't believe that the church has successfully been able to network with the intention of building relationships to provide like a nice, um, stable environment to encourage relationships. We don't teach that no more. We don't teach marriage no more. We don't teach the role of man, man role of woman. So... That's just my little opinion. Can I add That's to that? Go ahead, bro. I wanted to add that um, I'm going down the point of men in church. To be successful in the church system, you have to be somewhat of a feminine man. Yeah? Real men on road don't want to come into church because they know they'll have to lose some masculinity. Because a lot of what we see in church is just gay. That's right. Yeah? And if you, the more feminine and the more of a crony you are, the more of a yes man you are, is the more you make it in the <laughs> church systems, right? So that's number one, why there's a lack of men. Number two, um, go on, Michael. I, I do agree with you in some respects that there is a lack of men, but I, won't, I don't believe in that whole narrative because I believe there's a lot of women in church, but not a lot of them are saved and not a lot of them are wives because you can be in church and you can be saved, but you might not be a wife. And that comes back to the older woman not teaching the younger woman. There is a lack of discipleship, specific male and female discipleship in church. And this is why there's a lot of divorce, because a lot of people got married and they was not ready. They wasn't discipled. They weren't wives. They weren't husbands. Um, and so, yes, there's a lack of men. Yes, there's actually a lack of quality men. But that's because there's a, there's a feminism spirit that has got into the church. Yeah. Yeah. Where women want to be teaching men, but they ain't teaching their own girls. And that's why you have a lot of teenage pregnancies. Go teach those young women how to be women before you try to teach me how to be a man and follow the order of the Bible. Because Genesis 3.16 showed you how the order is supposed to go. Yeah, in the church, that there's not supposed to be any woman in spiritual authority over men because that's disorder, that's rebellion, that's witchcraft. So you want to know if Jezebel and disorder is working in your church, you've got a whole bunch of women in spiritual authority over men turning them to effeminate homosexual men. Yeah? But this is why we have a lot of problems with men in the church because God's order has been broken and that's why society is broken because the home is broken and the church is broken and it's time that the church stop following the world and the world's order. That is the issue. But also, like I go back again, there's not a lot of wives in church. I'm sorry, there's a lot of women, there's not a lot of wives and that's from my single pers perspective. A lot of good, young, decent women saved. Not saying they're not saved, but they're not wives. Go ahead, Sister V. Um, Sorry, I've had my hand up for a while. I'm not sure if anyone's watching. Because I don't want it to, I don't want it to be a rough topic. Sorry, Sister V, one second, one second. Sorry, Sister, sorry, Sister V. Well, Michael, can you do me a favour? Because I can't see, there's apparently some hands up and stuff. So can you keep an there's, eye on Mary Ade's got, Mary, got Mary, a hand up. She's had it for a while. Yeah, Mary's had a hand up. All right. All right, thank you. Sorry, um, Sister V, um, for cutting them. Yeah, so what I wanted to say was... Um, I've had a few things to say actually, some of it has gone from me, but um, so I think when, so I think, it was it Michael that asked, um, was it, is it Crystal, Crystal Daly? Yeah, so he asked her before, oh, what were you doing, you know, um, at the time you were single, were you serving, were you studying, were you doing something? Um, I watched a video a while back and I think we need to stop with this notion of, <sighs> okay, if I do this, then God's going to give me that. It, it, it doesn't mm. work that way. As single people, why are, why, what the question remains, if I'm serving in church, if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, going about my daily life, there were so many women at the well when Rebecca went, but for some reason she was chosen. They were all serving. You can't say because, okay, you got, you know, you got married 
fair enough. Some people got married, they weren't serving in churches, they weren't even doing anything, they weren't even expecting it. So it's not like God is not some sort of genie where I put this in and then I get this out of him. There is a time and season for everyone. And so I'm not saying don't serve, obviously, but we need to stop kind of promoting that notion because people feel very frustrated while I'm doing this. Why isn't it happening? So we need to stop, I think, promoting that kind of mindset. And um, secondly, I wanted to say, so with what you've just said, Michael, um, when you spoke about the order that we need to speak to the ladies first before telling the men how to be a man, absolutely not. I completely... Whoa, 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 whoa. don't misquote me. I never said anything about speaking to the ladies first. So, but, but I think I, you I said... Gave I gave two think... examples. I said, we need more wives. I said, there's a lot of sisters, but not all of them are wives. And I said, there's a male problem. But I said, we don't talk about the female problem because we have it. The narrative is that it's just rubbish men. No, there's not, there's not a lot of wives as well. So women need to be taught and the men need to be taught. So okay, so, okay. women need to be taught first. So don't, okay, don't cool. Please. Cool. Okay, so you've clarified. Both of them need to be taught. I think you'll find also that I think a lot of women in the church, women are the ones being talked at. You need to be this kind of whack. You need to be... The, we actually feel like the men aren't being spoken to. That the, there's a lack That's of leadership. There's a lack of leadership for... Yeah, you're saying for both men and for both men and women. I'm saying that I think you'll find that in churches that women are the ones that are often spoken to. We're the ones told about how to submit, how to be this, how to be a wife, how to be that. But the men are often actually... There's a lack of mentorship. There's a lack of leadership. Obviously, I can't generalise, but I think more times than not, that's the case. The women, we're, we're the ones staying there waiting um, to be, you know, found by you know that yeah, but in my of thing, what is the quality of information you're getting that's my oh, problem like i said it's not creating wives so, so may, maybe you're getting maybe the information you're getting ain't good either so that's my whole point you might be getting spoken to but it's not necessarily good information because if these same people are not raising biblical men then they're not raising biblical women either because no one's getting taught so all i'm trying to say is i think you'll find that in the church more <laughs> times it's the women that are being um, you know, spoken to and groomed. And the men, for some reason, there seems to be a deficiency in that aspect. So that's, that's the contribution I wanted to make. Obviously, from church to church, it will look different. But I think on the whole, there are lots of articles to, com to confirm this. It's not just my word. You will find that there is a lack of leadership. There is a lack of um, some sort of grooming and leading for the men. It's mainly- We the agree. Women that's women. exactly so that's what I said. I we, to we don't disagree, but Thank why you. is it any time we mention problems with women, women get on the defensive? It's okay to just say men are trash, but when we start to deal with the women, women always get defensive. Why can't we deal with women as a separate issue? We, you know, so we, we've taken this men, men off. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna chair this. <laughs> I'm going to share this again. Time, time out. So please, um, please, can we use whatever? I don't know. If you need to uh, put in the chat that you would like to say something, please do. Or yeah. Something like that. Because otherwise, it gets into a bit of madness. What I, what I would say, thank you so much, Mary, for, for sharing. Oh, you're welcome. I just I do yes. want to, to clarify, um, just to clarify, because what I didn't hear was anyone saying, if you serve God, he will give you this. So I want to clarify um, that, no, well, from what was being said, or, or no one was saying, um, if you do, if you, yeah. No one was That's what I was, there is to be. Manipulating. Yeah, I think it's not, it's not necessary that somebody said it. I was just given a contribution, you know, okay. like it's an open That's floor. So I was, just, okay. I was just giving it as a contribution. Okay, thank you. No, thank you. And you're absolutely right. Um, this kind of transactionary relationship we have with God so in, some, in some cases. Oh, that's, what, oh, that's, that's the what, word. I like that word. Right. It's just that's not. What I was going to point out to say that whatever we do in the king, whatever we do in church, it's voluntary. Right. Yeah, it's voluntary. If you are doing anything, it's voluntary. In the fact that it's not for a payment or not for a transaction because Jesus paid it all in terms of the covenant relationship with Him. Once we're in covenant relationship with God, yeah. Yeah, it's things that we do are our love. You know, we have a very important question in the comment section. I would like Pastor Joseph to answer this. Isn't feminine masculine a social construct? What decides either or neither? Um, can I just start by saying the blood of Jesus? Um, <laughs> if if gender is a social construct, then we're going down a very very dangerous pathway. Sorry, let me just make uh, that clear. Sorry, let me just make uh, it clear. Can I just make it clear? Do, do, so, please. 
<laughs> male and female. We already know that. Man is man, female is female. Yeah, or, or, or no, sorry, let me say that again. Man is man, woman is woman. That's what I meant to mm -hmm. say. That, yeah, mm -hmm. we know that. I'm not trying to say man is trying to be woman, and I'm not trying to say woman is trying to be man. Not at all. Very different. Women can't, shouldn't play in sport. Scientifically, man is man, woman is woman. Now, what my question is, what determines woman as female and man as masculine? So you're saying, are oh, the churches turning man feminine? But I, I'm trying to understand what you mean by feminine because I believe that that is a social construct. Unless, because, you know, I'm not very well versed in the Bible. Tell me. Um, that's my, I'm not trying to be ignorant or provoke. I'm actually, I am genuinely trying to ask, isn't that a social construct? And what decides what that one is and what isn't? Um, okay. So in... Are you, is this going to be an open question or you just need to an answer? Well, it, it was an open question to the chat, but, um, question but, Pastor, my, but Pastor Joseph said he wanted to answer it. So I'm happy for anyone to answer. But, yeah, um, can, can we let Pastor Joseph answer this, 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 question question is, this question is not an open, um, no. Elder Joseph, can you um, take it? Please? Okay. Yeah, I didn't say I wanted to, I was asked to. So I, I'd say on, on the aggregate of scripture, if we just wanted to take a very biblical approach and we were to take the attributes and the roles ascribed to men in the word versus the attributes and the roles ascribed to women in the word, we'll have a very clear picture of what um, masculine and feminine is. And I think obviously Michael's made a very, very loaded statement. And I think it, it's going to take a, a long time to unpack it. Um, but if we were to just point to, um, the, the role of uh, men as, as heads, okay? So we're in an in a age right now where to say things like the man is the head of the woman um, is not received very well because it sounds like domination. It sounds like you're undermining the woman. Whereas biblically, the man as the head of the woman is a very empowering and covering thing for the woman. It's a very safe and protective place to be if a man is your head operating as the head of you as Christ is the head of the church. Um, we are socially um, engineered at this point in time to have an almost visceral reaction to anything that would suggest that the man has anything over the woman. Okay, and so we, we've got to fight against that instinct which has kind of been engineered into us. Um, so men, in terms of the church now, what we see in church, what makes church feminine is the fact that, and, and it, it maybe it happens in your church, maybe not. But because you have an abundance of women in church and um, so few men, the men that you do have in position have a number of choices to make. Um, they have a choice to um, listen more to women, work with women, put women in positions, um, or they can be very deliberate about how they develop men in that process. What I have seen over time is that men succumb to the multitude of women and they build church around what women want okay and so eventually you have something that makes the pastor feel very comfortable and safe and he can come in he can wave over there he can wave over there he's got he's not one of you know all these people in his corner but why is it then that there is so few men behind him i would suggest that in those situations um it it pays the pastor to, to, to play to what the majority need. And over time, that amounts to a, a deterioration of, of men being in that church. It's a, it's a subject on its own. I'd suggest Michael and Vula that we can, we can look at. But Michael's made that comment, and I'm only adding what I believe is some context to um, how church becomes more feminine. It might come down to, in the end, how, uh, who gets promoted, how decisions are made, how the church um, even runs its service. You know, women... If you look in, from, for instance, the scripture, I wish somebody could show, they'll get it for me, but it speaks about what the maiden's like versus what the son's like. And it speaks about wine, um, that the maidens love the wine. And I think the sons love the corn. <laughs> Read into that what you will, but you, you'll see consistently throughout scripture um, a difference between what man gravita gravitates toward and what women gravitate towards. And if eventually you build something that gravitates that, that women gravitate more towards the men, then there's something wrong in the way you've built it. I don't think I've done great justice, Mike. 
But I also no, wanted to say, we oh. don't even really know what biblical masculinity is anymore because so much of the world's philosophy has entered into the church. If we stay with straight Bible, a lot of what we see today is not biblical. Yeah, and your opinion doesn't matter. How you feel about it doesn't matter. What the word says matters. And so we've built a lot of ministries, as you said, that cater to demographics, but don't cater to the word of God. And you right. want to know why there's chaos in society? You want to know why there's no men in church? Because you're not doing what the word says. You're not doing what Acts says. Your, your, your church is not built on the foundation of the prophets, the apostles, and Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. Because a lot of what you do cannot be backed up in principle by the word. And so there's too much opinion and emotion running church and not Bible, right? And let me just show you this, yeah? When Eve ate, nothing happened. By one man, sin entered into the world, yeah? The role of men has been crushed and destroyed and battered. When I grew up, we were talking about, we need more men in the home. Now you can, now LGBT people are allowed to adopt. Right? This is the world, this is how crazy the world is. Now, this is not to prioritize men over women. I believe we're equal in the sight of God, but I don't believe we're equal in terms of responsibility. There's a higher responsibility on men to carry the faith, right? And to lead the home. That is lost on this generation of church. And until we return to the order of God, you are not going to see revival. It's as simple as that. I don't care for any emotion, I don't care for your feeling return to the order of God and get revival or do what you want to do and have the nasty mixed up church we have now. And this is why you had to bring COVID because like in Amos and in Isaiah, I said, I'm sick and tired of your songs. I'm sick and tired of your convocations. I'm sick and tired of all this rubbish. This is why God had to mash up church. You have to close it down and you have to get people in direct fellowship with him because we've been following a lot of reprobate men who crept in on ways, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. It's time to get back to the word. Jesus. Thank you, Brother Michael. Um, I would say, I would add to that as well. Oh my God, mash it up to fuck it up. Okay, amen. Um, what I would like to add to that um, is to illustrate one important thing. When we stopped being, um, what's the word? I don't want to say adventurous with the gospel, but that's the only word I can use to describe it. When we, start, when we stopped going and getting souls and having stories of like the, we were out there and God healed this person. And we, when we stopped having that vision of outreach and evangelism and um, testimony, yeah, that, that kind of, which is, um, as I understand it, please correct me if I'm wrong, but brothers love a story. Men love a story. Men love a conquest. They love a... And when we stopped giving men the responsibility... We need work. Yeah, work. There you go. Sorry, sorry, I couldn't put it in the right words. But when the church became more about maintenance, which is a woman's... I would say it's, uh, it's, more, it's more feminine in terms of at home. Let's say we are investing and sewing into the home and bringing up children and, and do... We're very... When leadership became more about maintenance and administration, you could... You could you could interpret that as femini feminization, if that's a word. But when we stopped giving men stories, we went out, remember when we went out last week and that guy with no leg and we prayed for him and three legs grew or whatever it was, right? When we stopped having, when we stopped pushing and yeah, sending people out, when we stopped sending people out, um, I think that, that that's part of what has strangled or, or possibly. Can I say, but is it that we've stopped sending them out or they've just stopped going out? out? Stop sending them out, stop going out, whichever way around it is, whatever, whoever's in, in eldership or leadership who's, who stopped passing that down, whichever way you want to look. When I say we stop sending them out, I know. I'm trying not to be specific. I'm saying. I, I, I think that because the training starts, once you're at a place of like, you don't just go straight to university from the age of five, you have to go through a training. You have to grow through, you have to be grown. And, and I've known a lot of our leaders, and I say elder leaders, who have been groomed and reared for the ministry that they are now very fruitful in. And it's not something that, and I say that as a, and I say ministry because even marriage is a ministry too. 
It's not just and it's not just a case of the, um, us being in auxiliaries or being in youth departments and then going to brotherhood department, going to women's department because of our genders. But we should be we should be you know nurturing ministries so that we find our compatibles in the field in which we're working because you know everyone's got their corner and their things that in which they are well versed and all that they're quite you know able to do themselves but if you don't find somebody compatible in that field or you find somebody that you can be compatible in order to you know start a church or and that's all um, go out and evangelize together or go out on the mission field together in terms of helping those who are less watched because that's what the church is not looking like right about now right about now it just looks like a like a social place it's not necessarily looking like somewhere that is hope is actually like you said going back to the scriptural thing to bring people in to know who christ is if we know who christ is through the things that we're doing and we're actually enabling our ministries to be more than just our gender roles, then you will see that marriage itself as well, whether it is for you or if it's not for you, is a ministry. And this itself is a platform that is supporting healthy relationships. So healthy relationships starts from a healthy environment that shows you how to have a healthy relationship with God first. Having a healthy relationship with God means that we're not just picking him up for convenience. We're not just picking what's right for us right there and right now, but actually being able to be apt in hearing from God and to seek God in what we're doing. It says, but whilst men slept. Yes, Kemi said, whilst men slept. And a lot of this at the moment, people say, oh, the church is sleeping. The church isn't sleeping because the church is female. He said that it's coming back for a bride. So if we're getting the house in order and if the men are coming back in order and in line to what they're called, prepared and released to do, because it's to go out into all the world, and not just for us to go out into the world, he said to go forth and multiply, not just for us to take what they give to us and to multiply it, because we can do it. Even where Solomon's, Solomon's mother schooled him and said, you know, if he who finds a wife finds a good thing, and even a virtuous, and, spe, and told him about uh, being a virtuous, about a virtuous woman, that was his mother, a queen in a castle, with everything to her hand, yeah, and looking out of her window down into a field and seeing a woman who would probably be seen as less than her doing everything that she felt that she didn't have a liberty to do. So we have to really see what, what we have to see ourselves from a kingly from a kingly and a queenly perspective, rather than just seeing ourselves as volunteers filling spaces in a in a building and actually see ourselves as purpose driven people. And those again are my few words. Thank you, sister. Me, what I would like to say is that this. The, this topic itself is huge, right? So talking about um, the, the problems of, um, let's say, the gender imbalance in church, um, masculinity and femininity, there's a lot to unpack. And what I would say is that um, I think it needs a dedicated session and I wouldn't like to hastily unpack some of that here. There is a lot happening in the chat, um, but I would like to be responsible and biblical about uh, some of the things that are, are are being asked or addressed here. So I would suggest that um, we'd need to deal with that a bit separately. It is related, obviously, to to to, to dating and courting and, and the pre-marriage things, right? Because we need to already have a good grasp of who we are in Christ, like Sister V said, and, uh, and a matching biblical principle and understanding of our roles in the home that we would like to build with the prospective person. However, at 10 to 10, I don't want to unpack all of that now <laughs> because it's very, um, yeah, it's very, it's, it, there's a lot to say. There's a lot to say. And actually, um, some of it is discussion, but a lot of it is biblical teaching. So I wouldn't like to try to tackle that. Is that okay, my, Brother Michael? Would you agree with me there? Is that okay? Yeah. Perfectly fine to take everyone through what the word says. So that's why we can do it another day. We, 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 we tackle another time because it is extremely important and contributes maybe to some of the problems that we... But also, we have a lot of videos in, on our YouTube channel. So if you want to go to Divine Order playlist on Young Adult Ministries TV, it's all laid out there. Thank you. Line by line, precept by precept, in orderly <laughs> fashion. Okay. Um... In, in, um, I feel like I don't want to cut the, the I, it's difficult, so I don't want to cut the conversation, but um, yeah, I, I want to kind of steer things back a, a, a little bit to um, the original, let's say, field. 
So um, let's just go back a, a, a little bit because another aspect, sometimes I feel like when we have these conversations, we talk about them from a very churched perspective. So we make the assumption sometimes that everybody has grown up in church or everybody has or knows, yeah, um, the, the principles and is a certain way. But what I would like to just kind of bring out quickly is experiences where people have not um, necessarily grown up in church. If people already came into church and they have children already, um, is there any advice? Is there a way to kind of bring these kinds of um, um people into the conversation like how would some would you advise or what would be the advice for someone who is, has already had children maybe out when they were in the world come into christ how do they approach um godly dating godly courting um are there extra things to take into consideration is there anyone that has anything to say about that because sometimes I think that we just always talking about, oh, these two people who have never, they've never known man and never known a woman and they're virginal and wonderful and just come together by the Lord. Um, but that's not, that's not the, the reality. And if we're actually um, seeking to pursue the kingdom and bring in all manner of people, we have to also take into consideration and be mindful that um, the family that is ideal is not necessarily um, the reality and how how can we how can we bring that into being something that is still beautiful glorifies god and um yeah what's what yeah does any any, any married people i'm going to stop there any married people have anything to say um, sorry are you asking a question of married people who've had children outside before they got married together or are you asking a question what is the preset for those who've had children prior to being married and how can they pursue being married in yes. the so my question is um is is both really is there anyone online who was who was married um who was who's had children out of um marriage if you're happy and feel free and comfortable to share your experience um how did god put you together and if that hasn't happened um if that hasn't happened, do the people who are married at this time have an I have any um, wisdoms or word to say about um, dating in that area for these kinds of people? I, I just think on this one, Viola, I think it's if you don't have anybody here with an experience of how they've done it, then it, you know, my, my, my comments as a married person is, is limited. I, I think it's really a pastoral one and it comes down to the quality of your church's pastoral um, setup. And I think this is, it's a really big thing that's lacking in our churches is actually a mature way to go about these types of conversations without someone feeling they have to be somewhat surreptitious to get that contact or to have that interaction. And um, for me, in my experience of what I've seen, and bishops do and pastors do and i've mentioned this on a different um, conversation before um the best oh sister melissa's here uh yes pastor joseph i am speak sister melissa i didn't know if you were going to speak up or if it was your or the role go ahead i'll, I'll uh, cut please. right here oh that's fine praise the lord so i think i'm going to answer the quest the first question he asked so i'm married um to my husband but before we got married my husband had two children and initially, none of us were in charge. We start dating um, while we were unsaved. So basically, I was personally fully aware of the fact that he had children and we were planning to get married. So that wasn't an issue for me. At the time, I was relatively young because I got married when I was about 22, 24. So I was relatively young and he had two kids. But when we decided, uh, we got married, we met in Jamaica. My husband lived in UK, basically, and we were having long-term relationship, communicating back and forth, came to the UK, fully migrated in 2014. Prior to that, though, I must say that I got baptized in July 20, 2012, and 
my husband got baptized September 2012, so a couple of months apart, we got baptized, then we got married the following year. So for me, I think initially from a very young person, I never you know, decided to settle down with someone who had kids. I think for initially for me, the excitement of getting married overlooked the responsibilities that would have come along with being married to someone who have children. So the whole idea of having a marriage and stuff like that, I totally just got overlooked all of that stuff. And the initial issue that we had was that the fact that we didn't have any proper counseling. So when we went to our pastor to tell him that we were going to get married, knowing that he had kids, no one counseled us. No one, you know, navigate us like, okay, your life is not only going to be a wife, you're going to become a mother with two children. You're going to be dealing with mothers that, you, you know, they, they, these kids have their own mothers. How does that look like as a family, as a whole? So there was no counseling with that. So initially, when I came to the UK, you know, have the children with me, that was fine because I knew them before we, you know, officially got married. But there were some things that I struggled with initially, dealing with having two young children, you know, then being pregnant and having my own kid initially, how, how do I put all them together? How do they bond together? Because they live separately. So that was an issue. And so it, I realized it was really God with prayer and fasting that helped me as a young person to find ways how to become practical, how not for it to affect our marriage how to deal with the fact that I'm still young, still wanted to have my career, but my husband is older than I am. He has children, I have to become a mother to them. So those were some of the challenges that I initially faced as a young person. And as I said, the big issue was no one really counseled us. And the good thing and the blessing was they were, they were lovely kids. They weren't rebellious. They were the children who knew that because I wasn't their biological mother, they would treat me that way. But then you have situations where you're going to be interlocked with children who know that you're their stepmother. They might not like you. And then that might become an issue. So it's finding a solution. How are you going to deal with it? So for Rory and I, which is my husband, um, living here, the, com the children come in weekends because they didn't live with us. Um, and they still don't they live with their mom but it was trying to find that bridge or trying to bridge a gap between the different um barriers between the parents so dealing with meeting with their mothers you know, you know having conversation with their mothers that the children coming over so there were different issues that came along the way but eventually they got smooth along and so my encouragement is that for instance as a young person get into marriage meetings a male who already have children and you want to get married, ensure that you get the proper counseling and look at it on a whole picture. Because sometimes we're so focused on the wedding and the marriage that we focus on the bigger picture. Now you're gonna become a mother. What was your life before that? I was, I grew up as an only child, so I didn't have siblings. So having responsibility to look out for kids was not something that I was brought up into. That was like a whole brand new different life complete in itself so both of them merging together I had to know how to navigate through that and the issues that my husband would have that maybe I wasn't being mother anymore so there were so many different factors to put into place and so eventually my husband and I have four children together um, we really and truly worked through our marriage whatever issues came along we've been married we've been together 12 years as I said we might we were together four years before we got married so we've been together 12 years. The children are always here on a weekend, um, but it took time. It was a process of everything coming together, building, the, putting the, the family together. And so I'll just encourage you guys just to get proper counseling, make sure you seek the necessary advice, speak to people who already been into the situation because some who we take advice from is very important. Find if you're, go, if you're gonna be in a marriage with someone who have kids, whether male or female, the husband or the wife, you know, get advice from people who have been there before, make sure you speak to the pastor, get the proper counseling because that's very crucial to, in terms of putting that home together. Just. I'm trying to summarize it as best as I can, not to go into too much detail. That's, wow, what a testimony. Thank you so much for sharing that because I think um, that's, that, that's amazing. It's a reality for, for so many of us. Um, um, 
yeah it's a it's a it's a yeah it's a reality for so many different people that the family it looks a bit different and there must be um a, a space for that and like you said the fact that you didn't really have the mentoring or counseling is something that we um i say we like i'm i'm not part of this <laughs> sorry the leadership sorry the church elders can really consider when it's time when it's time to um sister Bueller. you know counsel yeah can i just add one thing to that and, and thank mm. you sister melissa for speaking up um just to, to pivot on what she's saying about getting the counsel there's a lot of good books written by Christian people and even some by non-Christian people. Saints, read. Read yeah. about marriage. Read about raising children. You're not going to lose, right? These are not, I'm not talking about perverted books on you know, transgender and all that. I'm talking about just straight up parenting books. Like you'll always get something from these situations, even marriage books. I encourage the saints that the help is not always in the church. Um, but there are other Christian resources, you know, there's focus on the family and those kind of things, like tap into stuff and make yourself, you know, best prepared for these kind of scenarios. Um, and that's all I want to add to the need for counsel, because we don't always have easy access to the right type of counsel. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother, Brother Joseph. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt, Stabula. There's a, someone that's going to question in the chat, I, and I don't, I don't I, want them to be, to be, to, to misunderstand or to, I want them to get clarification. You were going to say something, Joseph? Yeah, there's a difference between authority and influence. Maybe just leave it there, because I think we're going to open up a can if we go yeah. into that question again. There's a difference yeah. between being influential and having authority, right? Mm -hmm. The man was first. Anyhow. Can I, can I suggest, can, can we do like a, I don't know if there's like a, a raw after hours where we stop recording <laughs> this on this topic. <laughs> that those who need to go can go. And if anyone would like to continue a specific discussion, I think it's, it's a very good um, good point. And it has I can see it. a lot in the chat. So I'm not, I don't want to be dismissive. Um, I just want to find a way to like close off this section so that those who I need to- see it now. More raw. More raw, yeah. <laughs> more raw, I like that, more raw, more raw. I have a question. I don't know if it's been addressed before, before I got here. Yeah. Go ahead, I, have, I have a question um, so, as I said I don't know if it was addressed before I got on but my question is really around um, as, as a woman who wants to you know respect, respect a, a man's authority and, and, and headship in the house and things like that how do you navigate a situation that you might come across where as a woman you're the breadwinner in the household you're the person that that um, essentially earns the money that's sustaining the household and the man doesn't. Uh, can someone take someone take that? Um, is Brother Tafari still there? Is Brother Andrew still there? Um, yeah. What, what was the question? Sorry. I caught the last part. I didn't catch the beginning. Sorry, I was coming off mute. Um, so the question was basically, um, how do you, let me rephrase it then. So how do you maintain your role as a woman and your femininity and the rest of it um, when you find yourself in a situation where you're the main breadwinner in the house? So you're the, you're the, you're the main earner in the household or you earn substantially more than your husband? Yeah, I, I think that that is um, such an, an achievement and it shouldn't be frowned upon that you make more money maybe the, um, the person that you're with isn't in a um, job that makes that amount of money. Um, there was a time where I wasn't making as much money as Sherry was, but I didn't feel any less than, you know, when the household was being sustained. But in that, she, mainta I, she maintained her role as a woman, as a wife, as a support system, um, and not someone uh, who was saying, oh, well, I make more money than you. You know, go, go, go cook me dinner, go, go go make the bed, you know, I've got more money than you, big man. Yeah. You know, it wasn't that. Yeah. It was totally a respect thing. It was um, a conversation about, you know, I know you, I know that I'm not um, bringing in what I, what I want to bring in, you know, and that, and she was saying, you know, that doesn't make you, that doesn't make you less than, you know? So I think um, I say all of that to say, you're, I think you still can maintain your position as a wife, as a woman, making, um, more money than your partner but it's it's down to what that looks like for you and your partner could, could i jump in on that Can I tap on? 
Um, and before you answer it, can you just, I just want to add on to that as well. It's not just about um, maintaining my role as wife, woman, blah, 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 but also managing the dynamics because I know that in reality, obviously it's great that you've um, had that experience to far and you was able to um, work through it. But for a lot of men, that's whether they verbalize it or not, it becomes a deal breaker and it becomes a problem. So how, how can you, I'm trying to think, how, how do I word this? How, how do you navigate the feelings there? Yeah, that, trust me, it was hard because when I wasn't making enough money, I was just making enough money to, to maintain the household and I wouldn't ask for help for months, months and months and months and months and months. Um, and so pride got into that because my understanding of a, of a man was to main, is, is to look after the household or is to maintain the household. Um, not not understanding that the woman is the help me, you know, um, and is supposed to. Uh, me and Sherry always say, when when I'm down, she she can't be down. She has to be up, and when when I'm up, she, when she's down, then you know I have to be up. So it was definitely it was definitely hard having that conversation because she didn't know, um, because you know everything looked like it was okay, but again, it was a conversation thing, and by golly, it yo. The pr- I like it, yo, it was pride, and I did not want to have the conversation. But I said, if I don't have this conversation, then the bailiffs are gonna come knocking on the door, and ain't nobody coming to take away my things. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was, it was hard. But it was a conversation, and it was, um, just a just an honest one. And thank God she wasn't somebody who ever threw that in my face, you know. So again, you want to get with somebody who, who you know is gonna respect that those things could happen because, you know, redundancy happens, illness happens, you know, all those types of things. Life happens, you know, so if you, the person that you're with isn't willing to take a back seat, you know, just to, you know, look like they're less than, then that's not the right person for you at all. Wow. That's, a, that, wow. <laughs> thank you so much, Brother Tafari. That is, what a wonderful testimony. And thank you for your honesty and sharing in that. And that's just, that's, that's, that to me sounds like what marriage is, that, partner, that partnership and just everything is in the pot is ours. You know, you don't want to be with somebody who's like, yo, don't forget that butter in the fridge. I bought that. No, that's not. It's, that's <laughs> yeah, that's very cheeky. <laughs> um, I know Brother Andrew, um, uh, just before we start to close up, um, Brother Andrew, you wanted to come in there as well? Yeah, do not. Tafari. Two things. One, you literally chipped in some of the things I wanted to say. And two, I'm just letting you know out of respect. I call my wife Sherry as well. So I'm just I'm just letting just throwing that out there out of respect. So when I say Sherry, oh, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, and yeah. so do I. And I got married before all of you, so watch it. Yeah. Oh, oh man, best be Sherry's about the place, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Listen, wonders. I, 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 I think for me, um, one of the biggest things that, and, and Tafari said it was, there was two words that was mentioned by one by Sister Mila and one by Tafari. Mila said um, partnership, yeah? And then Tafari said pride, right? The problem is that we have a lot of insecure men um, that are married as well, and they haven't dealt with securities when it comes to actually joining with their help me. Now, for me personally, there was a time near the beginning of my marriage where Sherry was making way more than me right? Then I got into a job, blessings, right? Now, one thing is, one, what Tafari said, she never threw it in my face. She never brought it up in an argument, well, I do this. Like, you, she never undermined me. You see, I don't mind if Sherry made 10 times more than me, as long as she doesn't undermine me in terms of the, the, the money that she's getting. But I also, so I've just started a new job a couple of months ago, right? For, I work in an investment firm. But before that, I was unemployed for seven months. Now, as a man, yeah, you cannot communicate to a woman like how you can to a man, how depressing and how inadequate you feel. But then when you realize that money is not the only way you could provide for your family, emotionally and spiritually, you can provide for them as well. Uh, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but my wife is the type of wife where even when I was unemployed and I was so broke that it was my empty, my, oh, my, my wallet was peak. She would actually, if we went out somewhere to buy something or do something, now I didn't tell her to do this. She would give me her card like as if it's my card. Yeah. So stuff like that. 
was so encouraging and empowering um, that now that I'm in a job and we are making considerably more than her, because we're in a place of a partnership, it's not my money. It's not my money, it's our money. So no matter what, if she was making more, it would be our money anyway. I think the issue only comes where one, insecure men, and if you are insecure and you're already married and you're going through this, you need to have a brother that you can discuss this with, with mature men. Um, two, um, it being thrown back in our face and being undermined. If man, if you're unemployed or if you're not making as much money, try and fulfill more areas in the house. Try and fulfill more areas with your children. That's, that was just my mindset. So at least I'm still providing for my family, just not economically, but spiritually, emotionally, and um, physically in, in, in any way possible. So provision is not just finance. And that's the problem with men. We, we, they're so caught up on money that that's, you don't realize you can be so caught up on that that you, there's other aspects that is in neglect that you can work on during the time of being unemployed. But that's just me personally. How she still empowered me by slipping the card in my hand like as if it's my card was like that. I will never forget that. But yeah, that's just me. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, um, brother, yeah, thank you so much, brother uh, Andrew, for that. Listen, guys, I'm conscious of the time. And there's been a call for a, um, <laughs> like more raw <laughs> or after hours. So what I would like to do is draw this, this um, session to a close. But just, with, just highlighting some of the amazing... Um, I asked Natty about the different generations. Just, just in closing, some of the amazing um, remarks that we've had. Fundamentally, seek first. So God has to be the center of our lives. Our love for God and our relationship with God is what is leading anyway, not just for marriage and relationship and dating, but just in, 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 in everything. Um, it's important that when we are dating or courting, it is intentional. We're not we're not like the world. We're not doing things in that way. We're doing things in God's in God's order and in the, in the way. I don't want to make it sound like God's order. This is the way that God wants it done because actually it's just so beautiful. It's just amazing. Actually, what God God's intentions. When we look in the scripture, it's not good. For, he saw that it wasn't good for a man to be alone. Uh, a man that has a wife is a good thing. Um, you know, my body doesn't belong to me. It belongs to my husband. My husband's body doesn't belong to him. It belongs to me. All these things are so beautiful that God wants for us. So it's not about like. Ah, it's about God wants us to be happy and that our, our relationship should glorify God uh, the covering and accountability came out earlier on again it's really really important um, that there is accountability so seek your your, your spiritual leader your um, pastor your uh, mentors for um, for advice and letting people know what's going on that's very important and Brother Andrew also said, look, for him, and I think this is also a really nice um, um, uh, concept, putting yourself on the line. Um, Brother Sam, I think the brothers here, they just smashed it out of the park. Brother Sam said something similar. Brother Tafari as well. Listen, this is what I am looking for. <laughs> and you need to, you know, this is what I would like, whether it's talking to God about it or talking to, um, to the person that you're, that you're caught in. Yeah, you don't want to waste time. That was something that every brother said. I don't want to waste time. Sister Crystal said it as well. So that's um, being upfront is fantastic. Um, in the meantime, preparing yourself, um, finding a confident, finding that older woman that can talk to you, finding that older brother that can sow into you and teach you about what to be looking for, what to be, who to, how to be the you that God, um, yeah, that God, that God wants you to be until such time. And the killer comment, this is the killer comment of the night. I am building the table. You need to come with the chairs. That's, that's, that is, that was absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much um, to everyone who was joining. Um, in the end, there are personal elements, but we exercise biblical principle. Okay, so if you're being led by the Holy Spirit, everything that we do is being led by biblical principle. And that's not something that we can escape from. Um, and we don't want to do damage to ourselves and to our relationship with God and to our others. Don't forget, don't forget the person that you are dating or courting or whatever intended to is your sister in Christ, is your brother in Christ. I think sometimes if we, we, we fundamentally forget that you are dealing with an, a precious person um, in God's kingdom. 
And if we remember that, I'm dealing with a sister, I'm dealing with a brother, and we'll be respectful to one another and we'll keep things in line with, um, with, with, God's, with God's order and with God's principles. So thank you so much to everyone for joining. I am going to ask someone just to close off this. Sorry about that, Bill. I didn't mean to mute you. Sorry. Unmute yourself. Yeah, you did. No, I so didn't. Sorry. <laughs> um, is is um, Sister Cheryl here? Is she? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hello. Hi, Cheryl. Bless you. Can you just um, close this session off for us in prayer? That would be great. Holy and righteous Father, we come before you. We worship your precious name, O oh Lord God. We thank you for the words of wisdom tonight, Lord Jesus from all those who are on this Zoom meeting, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we ask you to continually enrich us, Lord God, with your wisdom. And Lord God, I pray that we will learn how to seek more of you for the right advice, for the right actions, oh Lord. Lord God, I ask you to bless every marriage that is on this call tonight, Lord Jesus. Lord God, enrich them and enable them, Lord God, that they can teach others in their generations and for other generations also, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we ask you that those who are single in this time, Lord God, that they will take something from the lessons that have been brought forth and that they will be able to seek, seek your advice, O oh Lord Jesus. Seek your, your voice, O oh Lord God, that they can hear from you to go in the right direction, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord God, that we will put away ourselves and that we will not be fleshy in our decisions, but that we will speak for your Holy Spirit as well within us to make the right decisions that we can make, the right choices that we can raise our families in the right way, O oh Lord God. Those who have walked into the kingdom, O oh Lord Jesus, out of sin, O oh Lord God, who have come in with, with various issues or problems or families already, Lord God, I pray that they will be able to find the partners that they need if that's what they're seeking. Lord God, I pray that they will have godly wisdom and counsel, O oh Lord Jesus. And Lord God, we ask you to bless every generation on mm. this call, O oh Lord God, because we all have issues, O oh Lord Jesus, that we have to deal with, but we all need to come together and have a, a united understanding. So we ask you, Lord God, to bless us in your sweet and precious name. Amen. Mm. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Cheryl. Thank you to everyone, uh, especially to our married couples who were able to make it uh, on tonight. We thank you for your, your wise words, your wisdom, your counsel. Um, thanks to everybody. And I hope that you are blessed. I hope that there's something to come away with, uh, um, come away from this with. Um, just keep trusting God, keep believing. And yeah, have a, have a blessed time. Have a blessed night. Um, Brother Michael, are you, you're called to and the recording? Well, yeah.